what is government supposed to do? Are you supposed to go and then and regularize private land? Are you supposed to acquire it and give it to the uh, so-called uh, informal settlers? It is very complex. And therefore, because of that situation, you find that even the provision of those basic services is not there. So let me give you an example here in Kenya. Our people who live in the informal settlements, they pay anywhere between 172% more for water than probably myself and uh, the other people who live in the suburbs. Why? Because the water is delivered by the so-called water barons or water cartels uh, in other places, that's what you call them. And so the person who needs water most actually end up paying the most for the same amount of water. And that is the reality that is confronting us. So part of what we are doing as a country to address that is to try and move them away from the informal settlement and incorporate them into our affordable housing program. And by doing so, we ensure that those new settlements that we are putting up, again, not far from where they are, because if you take them far away, again, uh, you're, you're uh, moving them away from their places of work. And uh, again, the cost of transportation becomes the trade-off. So we uh, have a, a very robust program that is looking at a multifaceted uh, implementation. And one of those is what is called the urban renewal. Uh, we are looking at our urban, our, my three minutes is over, uh, the, the urban renewal uh, program where we are undertaking uh, a renewal of our old cities. And by doing that, we are making sure that the, this affordable housing program comes in with all the basic rights, the basic services. But over and above that, we are also providing ICT, which has become a new utility. We are providing gas reticulation into these homes. And let me say that our affordable housing program has taken off. It is no longer some nice document or some nice power presentation. It is seldom that you find me nowadays in a suit. Most of the time, you're going to find me in some gumboots and uh, out in the field because we are groundbreaking every day and making sure that we are bringing a new housing program with all the basic services. And of course, the Department for Water, for us, the Ministry of Water, is a big enabler. So we really support them because their success means this program is going to succeed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, P.S. Charlinga. I think that you are right. The water is basic right. And I think that it's uh, right now, Kenya is leading one very structured initiative in the world with Brazil is building climate resilience in poor, in urban poor area. The leading, that means that the policy that put in place in Kenya is challenging and also must be shared with other countries in Africa. This is why I think that the president of Kenya leads this initiative and uh, it is very important because what he said, the peers, I think that we have, we have to learn from Kenya, you know, to tackle this problem that is very huge in Africa. I, uh, right now I am going to move to OECD, I know that uh, in OECD, you know, you have a lot of program regarding water resilience, and I, and uh, we know that we you you are at the heart of the round table that launch in uh, the World Water Forum in Dakar, and the question here is recalling the kickoff round table of mayors during the World Water Forum in Dakar 2022, what are the key milestones of, of this process? You have the floor, Oriana. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mu. I'm uh, very happy to be here. My name is Oriana Romano, and I'm uh, heading the water governance program at the uh, OECD, uh, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, I think here we are uh, looking at three important uh, keywords. One, the first one is water. So water and uh, the link with climate change in Africa is extremely important. In the past 15 years, uh, more than 38 million people
people have been hit by floods and we are talking about more than 100 million people that by 2050 uh, will face uh, water shortages. So as um, um, uh, Mr. Embassy was saying at the beginning, uh, uh, at the heart of our program has been really the link between water and uh, climate change. The second key word is uh, urban areas uh, in Africa. We are talking about uh, uh, a continent where that hosts 86 out of the current 100 mega cities in the world, and there is a, a huge disparities between cities and uh, a number of rural areas that also are lacking or they have a very inefficient. Uh, type of water services, so whether it is related to drinking water or sanitation, and also in some cases uh, a poor uh, water resources management. And the third key word and uh, the core of our work is uh, multi-level governance. Urban areas or rural areas cannot do everything on their own. Uh, they need uh, collaboration and cooperation with national government. Uh, and on, on the contrary, also national governments need for policy implementation, local uh, policy makers and local implementers. Um, so what we did in 2021 in collaboration with UCLG Africa was to uh, investigate on the multi-level governance uh, in African cities. And interesting enough, we have found that even if uh, national governments in the majority of countries, and we have worked with uh, around 40 governments, uh, so water is a prerogative of national government, there is an important wave of decentralization. In fact, three out of four cities surveyed have dedicated local policies on drinking water and sanitation and related investment plans. And also 40% of those that we have interviewed have policies for management of water resources. Now, for those cities that we have worked with, the main problems are two. Lack of funding, that would hinder investment and lack of human resources in terms of people working on water and in terms of capacities and skills. And as future priorities, they have identified the need of building these capacities and the need of a building infrastructure that would solve the problems in the long run. So what we have done as a consequence of this study was to create together with UCLG Africa and launched uh, at the 9th World Water Forum a round table of African mayors of water security. Now this round table, what we wanted to do was really to involve the political level. Without policies, things cannot be changed in practice. And without the engagement of mayors in the first place, uh, it's very difficult to do so. Also, water is not just water um, as a per se policies. As we were hearing from previous intervention, it is uh, very important to link them with uh, spatial planning and informal settlement, uh, waste management. So everything that uh, a mayor is really uh, overseeing in terms of policies. We have now around 50 mayors that join at the, the round table. We have presented uh, the work at a different COP. We will be doing this also in the next December. And um, the first milestone was really to launch an action plan. So make sure that uh, we listed a number of actions that could be uh, implemented at local level. Now I would like to invite you to talk to us uh, to join the round table if you are a mayor, uh, to uh, sign uh, the action plan for water security, uh, indicating what are the multi-level governance actions that should be undertaken uh, to uh, foster water security, because governance is just a means to an end, is not an end per se, At the end is really to foster water security. And also to join us tomorrow, we will be uh, all in the third round table, so it's a third meeting with a series of mayors, and we will uh, 
listen and going forward to our agenda. Another important milestone for us would be, and the UCLG Africa together, it will be the 10th World Water Forum that will take place uh, in May in uh, Bali, in Indonesia. So please uh, come and talk to us if you want to know, uh, if you want to have further information. I understand that my time is over now, so I thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Oriana, for uh, highlighting the goal for this uh, round table of my earth. Uh, and also, this uh, round table is uh, a platform for sharing all the experiences between cities to cities. And I'm going to, to jump for that to, to call uh, Omar Ba. He's right now. Je vais parler en français. Omar Ba. Uh, I am going to call Omar Ba right now. He is the head of uh, the Council of Local Government of the West Africa. And I want to, to congratulate him because he just uh, elected, elect that he is the president of, uh, of this region. And also he is the president of Mayor of Senegal. And, uh, and the mayor of his city. Uh, and uh, the question for Omar Ba, I think, is very clear. Is how can inter-cities, cities to cities, cooperation be a lever to accelerate the process of resilience and water security in West Africa? Je vous remercie beaucoup, M. Mbou, pour votre présentation et remercier tous ceux qui sont là et mes collègues qui sont au panel. Alors, la question qui est posée, c'est la coopération interville, que je ne recuse pas l'appellation, mais je préfère surtout la coopération intercollectivité, qui est beaucoup, à mon avis, beaucoup plus large. Vous savez que la zone de Limoire, puisqu'on est obligé d'être assez synthétique, est une zone qui est fortement secouée par l'insécurité en Afrique de l'Ouest. Et on sait également qu'une mauvaise gestion des ressources, et particulièrement une mauvaise gestion de, de l'eau, peut être un facteur de renforcement de cette insécurité et peut être un facteur déstabilisant. Je pense que ça s'est connu, je ne vais pas tellement y revenir. Nous savons aussi que l'eau, c'est la vie et que l'eau est la base de toute résilience. Et ce qui donne un peu l'importance d'une bonne gestion de l'eau dans cette zone particulièrement secouée par l'insécurité. Il est évident que les collectivités locales de Limois les côtés locaux, le CCT, le Conseil des collectivités territoriales, attachent une importance fondamentale à cette question de l'eau. Une réflexion a été commencée et nous voulons aborder les choses autrement. Alors, nous devons coopérer puisque nous partageons l'histoire, nous partageons beaucoup de choses. Ça, c'est le côté historique et émotionnel. Mais il est important pour qu'on puisse coopérer. Et c'est notre priorité actuellement, c'est de faire le point, c'est de faire l'état des lieux de la question de l'eau dans cette zone. Quand on parle de l'état des lieux dans cette zone, puisque c'est la base d'une bonne coopération, ce qui nous permettrait d'identifier les besoins spécifiques, les besoins globaux, les besoins spécifiques des pays, les besoins spécifiques des collectivités. Que ce soit l'eau de boisson, que ce soit l'eau d'agriculture, que ce soit l'eau pour les tout, qu'on puisse identifier de manière exhaustive donc, les besoins des uns et des autres, les, les besoins des différents pays, des, des différentes collectivités dans les zones. C'est fondamental dans une perspective de bonne, euh, de bonne coopération. Puisqu'on coopère en fonction des besoins des uns et des autres. Et deuxième niveau, c'est de faire une bonne identification des potentialités et des ressources dont nous disposons. 
il y a des points d'eau importants qui ne sont pas encore identifiés, il y a des ressources, et identifier enfin les zones de coopération possibles de part et d'autre. Je pense que tous ceux qui vont nous accompagner aujourd'hui, nous les invitons à nous accompagner dans ce sens, à faire ce travail préalable, à faire ce état des lieux, à faire ces identifications qui seront la base d'une coopération intercollectivité territoriale. Et nous invitons tous ceux qui vont nous accompagner à travailler dans ce sens. Alors, pour ne pas euh, encore prendre du temps, le résultat de, cette, de ces études, de cette identification, de cet état des lieux, on va le partager très largement entre les différents acteurs, local, gouvernemental, institutions, collectivités territoriales et autres. Mais ça devrait nous permettre de mettre en place un dispositif multi-acteur, vu que la gestion de l'eau est la... Est, donc, où interpelle plusieurs types d'acteurs, les États. Il faut que tous ensemble, qu'on puisse construire au niveau de l'Afrique de l'Ouest un certain nombre d'acteurs qui sont des acteurs donc différents, de, que ce soit des institutions et des États, et qu'on puisse partager un plan d'action, travailler de manière beaucoup plus rationnelle pour une meilleure gestion, en tout cas de l'eau, mais pour aussi mettre en synergie les différentes volontés qui s'expriment de part et d'autre. Je ne suis pas très